Hello there. Uh, today's video is going to be about my transitioning from the big game tarpon fishing and uh, inshore stuff to uh, more offshore slash reef fishing, um, more summer fishing basically. Uh, what that is is that during the summer times and hopefully it starts happening soon is the winds decrease and we start seeing more calm days. Now one of the most popular ways of fishing down here in the Keys is is basically anchoring up on the reef, uh, putting out a chum bag, and basically drifting baits back along with the chum, and then you'll pick up mangrove, yellowtail snappers, uh, groupers, muttons, um, mackerels, pretty much everything that swims out there you can catch by doing this process. So I've got a couple of tips that I utilize that I'll kind of go over with you. Now one of them is kind of an old school keys tip, and that is this Andy's Premium pink monofilament. Um, this is some good old school stuff. And uh, prior to the whole fluorocarbon invisible line thing, um, the people down here used to use this pink mono. And uh, well, the reason being is if you watch my video on the bedazzling vertical jigs, I had a chart there that kind of um, showed the uh, color depths that they disappear in. So basically, one of the first colors to basically disappear is reds. Reds will dissipate and become basically somewhat invisible within the uh, first 20, 25 foot range. So what they've done is that they've colored the line pink and that basically means in 10 to 15, if not that more, that line becomes a lot more invisible or a lot less visible. <laughs> and. Uh, which uh, basically complements that uh, fluorocarbon invisibility. Now, the other part of it with going to monofilament, and now I'm a, I'm a braided line guy, so pretty much all my reels have braided line. Um, having mono line on your reel makes things a lot less complicated. Um, it'll improve your fish catching based on the fact that you don't have any knots, um, you don't have any hardware, and it's basically a very smooth transition from the reel down to the end which is just basically hook that's all it is the line and then the more invisible the better so it just becomes a, a very efficient way to fish out there so that's a very good uh, type of line to go to if you're interested in doing some keys fishing and what you're looking at is a spool of uh, 750 yards runs about 15 bucks and you can use this as leader material as well now the second one that kind of intertwines with the the mono is this spare spool now some of the uh, bass fishermen all know this nowadays pretty much for every lure there's a specific rod specific reel and a certain line that kind of goes with it so you end up with 15 to 20 different uh, rod setups for fishing largemouth bass well it, it can be that same way down here in the keys but in order to kind of get away from that which i kind of keep things simple and a little bit more cost efficient is instead of buying another rod for my yellowtail rig I use my all go-to rod which is basically a 4000 reel series reel seven foot medium rod okay really good basic system can catch pretty much everything out here and uh, instead of buying a whole second setup for it for the uh, yellowtailing is I just bought a second spool okay so for 25 bucks I get a second spool and what that allows me to do is I've got my braided line on this spool and I've got my 15 pound Andes on this one for yellowtailing. So if I'm going to go and do some bigger fish hunting, swap out the spool, I've got my braid, 30 pound uh, fluorocarbon leader on it and I'm good to go. Uh, it just takes a minute to rerun the, rerun it through the guides there. Um, I'm going out yellowtailing, pop that off, put on the, the other one there. And that saves me of having to buy a $120 rod, another $110, $120 reel. So it saves me a couple hundred bucks by just going this route. And it's not a lot of different time for uh, swapping them out. So, so just a couple other tips there. Um, and the rest of the video is I went out and did a little bit of uh, patch reef fishing. Uh, just hit one of the patch reefs that are maybe a couple of miles from the shoreline, fairly enclosed. I uh, did a little bit of chumming and uh, picked up a few different species using the uh, new mono setup there. So uh, go ahead and check it out. Thanks. The area I was fishing is right here out of Geiger Key in the Shark Channel. Um, you can see this little bit larger patch right here and this is on Google Maps. 
and it's actually the uh, channel marker. Um, it's the only channel marker around all the lower keys here that's on the inside marking the, um, the entry to the uh, Hawks channel. And it lies just before you start getting to the, the first patch reefs out here. Um, it's about two miles from shore. What makes it really good for kayakers is that if you haven't been out to the reef before, it gives you a target. So you can see exactly where your end point is. So you can head from shore and you can easily see it from a shoreline. You'll just see a stick, st uh, a pole out sitting out in the middle of nowhere. And you'll know how far away it is. And there you can just guesstimate if it's uh, something that you want to do or not. Uh, easily navigable and uh, it's actually a pretty good size patch um, it uh, the patch reef itself sits in about 12 to 15 foot of water and the surrounding areas are basically white sands that go down to about 23 to 25 foot so around these edges are very good uh, ledge lines there that you can work and there's not a lot of structure out there there are some other patch reefs but this is the only one that has structure that's um, sits uh, above the surface there so it's always a, a magnet for for finding fish it's actually the place where I caught one of my biggest yellowtail uh, snappers by uh, pitching a large uh, live shrimp right around that pole there and uh, um, but uh, I basically anchored up just on the sandy area just on that 20 25 foot ledge there in the sand and then uh, up current so that my chum would basically run over the edge here and then it basically pull all the fish towards me and uh, that's what I did. marker there it's about the only channel marker the uh, beginning of uh, Hawks Channel uh, but there's not any other ones down here so it's kind of unique um, so I'm going to just do some basic light tackle uh, catch reef fishing just fun fishing uh, I've got uh, some a uh, couple things of chum I've got uh, some glass minnows I just cast netted and right now I'm between me and the um, marker there it goes up to about 12 foot there where that channel mark does uh, I'm gonna basically chum on this sand flats push the chum through in that whole direction there use the glass minnows to kind of spice things up and then just kind of see what stuff we catch so I'm gonna go ahead and get set up now and try to get the chum bags out start trickling some of the uh, glass minnows out there and uh, get things fired up uh, since I'm doing just a little light tackle fun fishing, all my stuff is uh, just my uh, inshore stuff, basically 2,500 uh, size reel. I've got, I think, uh, 15 or 20 pound braid on it. Um, and then I go to a lighter leader. I think this is a 20 pound leader. I'm actually got eight pound on it because I'm using this as my bait catching setup for uh, ballyhoo or whatever. Uh, pinfish, grunts. Um, my 4,000 reel, seven foot, uh, medium light uh, rod. Uh, this is that I'll do. 
I probably have it part of my intro is uh, I'm using the uh, 15 pound uh, pink Andes instead of any fluorocarbon, just all monofilament. Um, does really well, it makes it nice and easy. Uh, no changing out leaders, no knots, nothing like that. I just tie a hook to the end of it and drift bait back and then uh, the visibility with the pink works really well. This, like I said, old school technology that they've been using down here for forever. Um, before the fluorocarbons and they caught tons of fish, so that's what I'm kind of switching to. And then for my bottom setup, uh, I've got my uh, medium light Travala and I've got a uh, Abu Garcia uh, 6500 C3. Uh, basically this was my old uh, salmon jigging rod setup where I would jig for uh, salmon or Mackinac using like uh, one ounce maximum two ounce lures, primarily one ounce and less jigging, but uh, works for a good bottom rod for these uh, light fishing. So I'm rigging that with a little knocker rig. Um, I don't even know what that is, maybe one ounce. And then uh, just a little J hook, a yeah, light bait hook, and running that on the bottom. I've got uh, two types of uh, chum bags out. Um, this one actually is a real fine mesh, um, and this is actually what I. So you have a net that will disperse a block an hour, a block in every half an hour because you really got to get their attention but then hold their attention. So that's why that bigger mesh. But I'm really not, uh, I'm not stocking up the freezer, it's just fun fishing so I'm not too concerned about a huge amount of volume. And then I've also brought uh, one little stick of my uh, squid wrap um, and I'll just use that to catch ballyhoo out here. Um, and then I've got a uh, chum there but I doubt that I'll be using that. But just in case the bite's good and uh, I want to keep going on it. So that's what I'm going to get set up now. I'm also going to be subsidizing the chum and using this as my actual bait as well. Is that uh, I got some glass minnows and some pilchards based baby minnow pilchards in there. Uh, cast netting with the, uh, the 3 16 uh, cast net. So I'll be dispersing a few of these along with the chum and then uh, using some as a drift back as a bait as well. For uh, one of the rigs that I'm using, the uh, one that has the Andes uh, monofilament, just have a, uh, they call them like a yellowtail jig. So it's basically a jig with a little bit of a weight attached to it. Uh, put a couple of glass minnows on it. Uh, I think these are pilchards. And then uh, drift them back with the chum and then I'm throwing out uh, a few bits and pieces as well. So we'll see how that does. Uh, 
many who have shown up, so I'm just going to use my little number 12 long shank hook with a little piece of squid. Uh, and this is some six pound or maybe even four pound leader. And I just drift it back, cast it out, and then um, if they take it, they take it. If not, I'll slowly reel it back in, and a lot of times I'll grab it then. I want the value because I want to use it for uh, cut bait. Uh, I didn't bring the big rods, so I'm not going to use a live one on the bottom, but I'll use it as chunks. Long. Got a nice big ballyhoo to run as chunk bait. It's actually kind of big, but uh, we'll make do. And we'll see what we can catch on the bottom. For the bottom rod, I've just got this set up here, using it as a knocker rig. And I'm just going to just put it right at the edge of the, um, basically the drop off. I'm sitting on the sandy portion. I'm just going to have it closer to that edge there. And then uh, turn the bait clicker on and see if anything comes up. Here's the good stuff. Nice, good color to it. Ooh! <laughs> 